To kick today's video off with a small dose of positivity, I am currently hanging out over on twitch.tv forward slash TonyMo streaming some Anthem. Now, as a reminder, even if Anthem isn't particularly your jam, but you somehow made it to this video, my stream isn't just about the game we're playing. The game is more of a backdrop. I'm spending a lot of my time on stream just hanging out with the community, chatting with people in chat, talking about other games, talking about the games we're playing, talking about games we're looking forward to playing, talking about the industry, and everything in between. So if that sounds like fun to you, maybe pop on over, say hey, drop a follow, and join me for future streams as well. Moving on though, we've got to buckle down and talk about the current state of Anthem. I really wanted to create some discussion and some personal feedback and opinion on what I think Anthem needs to do in order to actually get healthy. As much as I'm enjoying the game, and as much as I'm having fun with that core gameplay loop, Anthem is still deeply flawed and it is not in a healthy state, especially when we talk about its late game progression and loot economy. I think a lot of people are already focused on the idea of more content, and while I don't think more content is a bad idea, I think these problems need to be resolved well before Bioware considers adding more content to the game. If you just add more content right now, you're going to have more things in which you can experience all the problems the game currently has, and that's not going to make anything better. So why don't we start by focusing on that end game? This is where a lot of discussion is already happening in the community, a lot of people talking about loot economy and the progression across the three Grandmaster tiers. There are some people who really just want to see more loot. I'm going to be honest, the discussion is always more complicated than that. Just increasing the drop rate on Masterworks or Legendaries isn't actually going to make your experience more enjoyable. There needs to be a rework of everything happening with loot, the rate at which it drops, when and where and how it drops across the three Grandmaster tiers. So this is, again, my personal opinion, just based on my time with other heavily loot-focused endgame-style experiences. When we look at the transition from Hard to GM1, it's actually pretty good. I like what Bioware's done there, and I think we can use that as a sort of benchmark for how they can scale into GM2 and into GM3. In hard difficulty, at 30, you start to have access to Masterworks, but it's only a small chunk of the loot table. You're going to get access to weapons, but no components and no abilities. When you head into GM1 and you are finally geared up for GM1 with a gear score of roughly 400, you'll have access to the entire Masterwork loot table. This is good. This is a solid transition, and I felt when I was actually gear score 400 and I went into GM1, it wasn't crazy. I wasn't getting one-shotted, but it was definitely more challenging. Now, the problem I have as we move from GM1 to GM2 is where the game and its end game starts to fall apart. Not only is that transition much, much harder, and we're hearing about players getting pretty much one-shotted because the difficulty transition is way too steep, but the way loot is working there is super broken. In fact, a lot of people aren't even running GM3 right now because it makes a lot more sense to just run GM2 and grind out Tyrant Mine Strongholds to get Legendaries and Masterworks to drop. Here's the way I'd like to see things handled. When we're in GM2, that should be your go-to Masterwork farm. This is where you should be able to make entire Masterwork builds for your Javelins and actually gear up for the challenge that should be presented to you in GM3. I really don't think you should be seeing that many Legendaries in GM2, and I wouldn't mind if they did a similar small chunk of the loot pool where you could only acquire a selection of weapons, no abilities, no components, in the Legendary table in GM2. Just like they did in Hard into GM1, and do the same thing with Legendaries in GM2. Let players get geared up for GM3, and as they transition into GM3, smooth out that difficulty curve, and make that the place where they continue to farm higher gear score Masterworks, and make that push for the rare chance to get their hands on Legendaries. Legendaries shouldn't become the norm in GM3. They should be what you're hunting and fighting for, just like you do in a game like Diablo 3 at Endgame. That should be the place where you start spending all of your time as a late game player, looking for those perfect legendary builds that take a bit of time. Now, the other issue that exists alongside of this curve currently are the strongholds. There are three different strongholds in the game, and they're not all the same difficulty. Once again, we have a case where players are pushing into the path of least resistance. If there is a masterwork farm and a legendary farm, people are going to abuse it. If there is a single stronghold that is easier to run than all the other strongholds that gives the same rewards 
as the other strongholds, people are going to run it. And that's exactly what is happening with Tyrant Mine on GM2. BioWare, I think, can do a couple things to sort this out. Obviously, a unique loot table that gave you special rewards for each of the three strongholds would be great. But I think well beyond that, they should just make use of the same system they're already using for quick play. Why not give players a reason to randomly queue for all three of the strongholds every single week at the chance to have additional luck or additional boosts to the game's overall drop rates? It's exactly what they do with quick play. It's an incentive to help other people make their way through the campaign missions and you get rewarded for it. So why not do the same thing for strongholds? It actually kind of boggles my mind that that isn't there. I think it should be there on top of refinements to the way the three strongholds work. I also think it would be cool to see a guaranteed item from each of the three strongholds every single week. So on refresh, why not let players who are in say GM3 get a guaranteed legendary every week, once a week, when they run Tyrant Mine, when they run the Scar Temple, and when they run the Heart of Rage. So there's an incentive to run each of those strongholds at least once because each one is gonna give you one guaranteed legendary before you go back to the standard loot table. If you combine that with a random queue for all of the strongholds that gives you an incentive for doing so, I think you're gonna have a lot of good reasons for players to not just run Tyrant Mine, but instead actually jump in and run all the strongholds every single week. It could be the same thing with GM2, guaranteed masterwork, once per stronghold, once per week, and the same thing on GM1, why not? Masterworks at that point are lower gear score anyway because of where you are in the loot table. Give people a guaranteed masterwork for each of the three strongholds one time throughout the week before, and of course, you know, moving into the next refresh. I think that would just be a great way to really start to redefine and rework how that late game progression works. Because I think for a lot of people right now, there's just no clarity to it all. They don't understand why they should push into GM3 or what the value of it is. And while, yes, I think we need to have additional aspirational content beyond GM3, there are plenty of games that cap out at a certain difficulty level that don't continue to add content that get played damn near endlessly. You know, Monster Hunter does a good job of this. Diablo 3 did a great job of this, especially in its later days. And it still does a great job of that. People love running the late game because they're just in that constant chase for that perfect piece of loot to make that perfect build. And that's what I always envisioned Anthem doing, and I think it still can, but it just needs to rework a lot of its systems when we talk about that late game loot economy and that late game progression. Now, moving beyond that, there are also some serious issues with the drops themselves. We're seeing a lot of really bad inscription rolls, and I think what confuses players more than anything is seeing inscriptions for sniper rifles on their light machine gun or their grenade launcher. A bunch of you guys have brought this to my attention just in the last like 24 hours with my chat. The number of people who were talking about getting like an LMG, masterwork LMG with a sniper rifle perk on it or a grenade launcher with a shotgun perk on it in both my uh, build video as well as my am I still enjoying it video as well as my Thunderbolt of Yenya video was really astounding and I've now started to see a lot of that as I've made my way into GM1 and I understand it doesn't really make a lot of sense and I also understand that not every inscription role is supposed to be perfect but there are so many pointless inscriptions on these roles where the player is just going to be confused and asking themselves why so am I supposed to run a sniper rifle with this like I get that there's a bit of form and functionality behind that but I just don't think it does enough for creating more interesting builds to warrant its existence. In my opinion, Bioware should just drop that chance entirely. I don't ever wanna see a sniper rifle bonus on my light machine gun. Components, that's a different story. If I equip a component and it's gonna give me a damage to boost and then I've got an inscription set that maybe boosts my shotgun and an LMG, that's great then. You know, I can look for a perfect roll on a component that's gonna boost up my current loadout, but I shouldn't be seeing sniper rifle bonuses on my shotguns and my LMGs. I just think they should forego that concept in the inscription rolls entirely. Now, moving beyond all of that, the game just has a lot of bugs. I mean, plain and simple, there are still a lot of technical issues that are causing people to drop out of Grandmaster three runs of strongholds, the audio is still dropping. Masterwork rolls outside of being bad are broken entirely sometimes with negative percentiles on Masterworks for their main stat as well as for the inscriptions themselves. There is just a huge amount of refinement that has to go into all of those systems. And I'm gonna leave it at that because we could talk more. We could talk about 
balancing changes with certain abilities across certain javelins but i think all of those things are far less of an issue than everything else we just talked about today this is where the meat of anthem's problems lie and before bioware starts pushing into new content territory and having to curate and balance additional you know end game style experiences they need to refine the end game is that is here because i think there's a lot to love but i think for a lot of people it's buried behind a wall of confusion and randomness and unclear and undefined difficulty tiers if they can bring this all together and push towards something like we see in monster hunter world there's something we see in diablo 3 the game is just going to be a hell of a lot better for it. And I think people will actually be able to enjoy that core gameplay loop that so many of us have already fallen in love with. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the topics we discussed today. These are the ones I want to hear you talk about. I know a bunch of people have a bunch of different things they want to talk about. But everything we covered today, let me hear your thoughts and opinions on it. And that means actual constructive criticism. If you're just going to post a comment that says, how about I uninstall this game? Number one, you probably didn't even buy the game if you're saying that. Number two, if you did and you don't like it, yeah, uninstall it and go play something you actually enjoy. You know, if you don't want to sit here and watch the rest of us fools try and help uh, Bioware make this game better than it currently is because there's parts of it we really, really love, then just go play what you love and, you know, it's all good, man. Just let's all have fun playing the games we like. Even if they're deeply flawed, some of us still enjoy going along for the ride. That does it for me. Once again, I'm hanging out over on Twitch. Come say hey to future Tony Moe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.